Once upon a time, in China, in the northern province of Henan, there was a temple called Shaolin, and it was the imperial temple of the emperor. It was this temple where Bodhidharma, the father of Zen, or Chan, came and taught the resident monks how to strengthen their bodies and minds in order to prepare them for the greatest task of spiritual enlightenment. It is said that he taught two classics, sinew metamorphosis and bone marrow cleansing. He also transmitted the 18 Lohan hands. These later evolved to form the 18 Lohan arts. These further evolved to form the 18 Lohan fists. The 18 Lohan fists and other skills and techniques brought in by great warriors and generals who had retired from serving the emperor evolved into other styles such as Tan Tui, Xing Yi Chen, Praying Mantis, among others. Thus, the monks of the Shaolin Temple became known for their righteous martial prowess and the Shaolin Temple itself became the Mecca for the best of Kung Fu. During the Ming Dynasty, a Ming Emperor built another Shaolin Temple in the city of Chuanzhou in the southern province of Fujian. This temple became the new imperial temple. When this temple was destroyed by the Qing Emperor, thankfully some Shaolin masters managed to escape. One of them was Venerable Qi Xin, who built a second southern Shaolin temple on Nine Lotus Mountain, also in Fujian province. Later, this temple was also burnt to the ground by the Qing army. Another monk, who escaped, changed his name to Jianang, meaning south of the river. He fled far south, spending 50 years searching for one trusted disciple to whom to pass on the Shaolin arts. Finally, at about 80 years of age, Venerable Jianang found Yang Fat Kun, a traveling medicine man, Kung Fu exponent, and stuntman who performed shows to pay his way. After a sparring match lasting hours, where Venerable Jan Nang handled Yang Fat Kun like a child, Yang Fat Kun knelt down and begged to become his student. He was accepted on one condition, to start from scratch. Yang Fat Kun was in his 70s when he accepted a young man already earning his living as a professional Muay Thai fighter. This young man was called Ho Fat Nam. From an unranked position, Ho Fat Nam rose to a top position. When Yang Sifu announced his retirement, he named Ho Fat Nam as his successor. A young Wong Kyu Kit was one of the last students to learn from Ho Sifu. When he first begged to be accepted as a student, Ho Sifu had only one request, start from scratch.
quite some time ago in Malaysia, in a city called Penang, there was a little boy of ten who would accompany his father to work. His father was a clerk at the Sun Tok Association. There, the little boy would sit on the threshold of the back hall to watch Lai Sifu, the resident Kung Fu master, a great fighter otherwise known as Uncle Righteousness, teach. The little boy, making no noise, no movement, watched the other students entranced. One day, Lai Sifu asked, Who is this little boy, so consistent, so interested? When he was told that the little boy's name was Kit Chi, Lai Sifu said, Wouldn't you like to learn Kung Fu? The little boy said, Sure, but I have no money. Lai Sifu said, Doesn't matter. Come and learn here. I'll teach you free of charge. The little boy trained hard for more than 10 years and became one of Lai Sifu's top disciples. The little boy, now a young man, went on to seek out a master whose Kung Fu was known to be soft. In a small town called Dunggung, he found the living national treasure of China, a master of great internal force and combat efficiency, Qi Kim Tong. The young man learned Wuzu Kung Fu from Qi Sifu for about two years. Pursuing excellence, the young man continued to seek greater fighting skills and training in internal force. He finally met a master who was a third generation successor of the southern Shaolin Temple of Chuanzhou, Ho Fat Nam. On the condition that he start afresh, the young man was accepted. He trained and studied hard and received his enlightenment in Kung Fu. The young man progressed to further his studies in Dit Da Traumatology and Chou family Wing Chun Kung Fu with a master called Chou Hong Choi. Out of respect for the young man's accomplishments, Chou Sifu instructed him to address them as Choi Guo, elder brother. The young man trained humbly, diligently and efficiently. He was grateful and respected as teachers the four patriarchs of their arts. He carried in his heart the teachings of Ho Sifu. Heart thinks, events materialize. He fulfilled Ho Sifu's instructions. Spend your time to spread our wonderful art to deserving people irrespective of race, culture and religion. Today, the Shaolin Monam Institute has grown on its own to become the widest spread in all Kung Fu and Qigong history, with over 60,000 students in more than 35 countries irrespective of race, culture and religion. Thank you Sifu, Si Gong, Si Tai Gong. <laughs>